Well, guys, it's getting worse down here. Somebody brought Connect Four. <laughs> this is big time. We need help. Help! <laughs> Look at you, Justin. Look what you did to your country. You brought us all back together, you fucking idiot. Freedom! Yeah, they're calling me crazy. All right, let's get it out and say for a moment that you're right. Who's the one thinking of ways to fight the system that night? Who wants to save your babies from the Five Eyes and from DARPA? The establishment's been poisoned, not to mention Big Pharma. Who wants to profit from your sickness? Kill you slowly while you witness this global metropolis being blown to bits amidst a tiny revolution that begins with you. Get your head on the sand and contemplate the truth as an actual truth. You call me crazy, but the crazy one is you. My only job in life is to examine it and try to fucking prove it. Yet even though you're mindless and you promote the senselessness and continue to let them take away what we fought for all these years, you call me crazy for wanting the truth I fear for you I catch a lot of flack and find it confusing If this were a comedy track, I might find it amusing But I have no illusions of the evil powers colluding You call me crazy, yet it's you that is using The mainstream message is riddled with brainwave signals And fake ass world models and Luciferian symbols You're calling me crazy for pointing it out, son You call me a threat when I say don't give up your guns And yet, I got the balls to say protect yourself And hell, you ain't worried what bottled water remains on the shelf But when the power stops and the lineups to the after party starts Your food and Water's gone, gas is rash and fashion, and Kardashians are far from thought. Finally be asking yourself, how do we manage and how have we got to this point, remember? Inaction and apathy are both behavior that's complicit with the powers that are in the process of eradicating your spirit. You need to wake up and realize before it's too late. Join us now. This is love versus hate. Good against evil, this is real life, not a fictional paperback or far blockbuster. You are being jacked. Who, what will it take for any of you to react while you sleep? I'm working with my colleagues to take this shit back. Keep on calling me crazy and sleep well at night. I think you're crazy for not wanting to fight. This is for humanity during a selfish era. Please wake up.
And it does look like we're live. Go ahead and say stuff there, uh, Gematria Database. Well, hello. Well, you're a bit louder than I am. I might trim you down just a touch. But uh, hello, it's the uh, show that actually does sleep once in a blue moon. This is the Daily New Reno. We got myself, uh, Robert J. Morris here. And I have Gematria Database to keep me uh, company. How you doing there, buddy? Excellent. Right on. Are you safe and sound uh, outside of uh, Vegas and the uh, lunacy? Yeah, at the moment. Uh, right on, right on. So, uh, yeah. I'll so back into it on Friday. Yeah, so we've kind of descended into uh, a crazy kind of chaos north of the border. And... Uh, it's been uh, kind of been an emotional little bit it's for a guy who didn't really give much of a shit. I've been kind of uh, really keeping attention and trying not to uh, be too negative. But <laughs> you remember, right. you remember Tara? We had a we had a little reminisce a session there. Kind of had ourselves a couple of drinks and just kind of reminisced about the old days how we were shouting from the rooftops to warn everybody about this and we're still the crazy ones by the way even though everything of course everything we said came to pass but uh i do digress and uh that's how they do it how they do us (laughs) (laughs) it's no doubt right well i do want to say though we do have a uh concerned citizen that uh i wanted to uh pay some attention to here let me just uh pull that uh, little uh, morsel of information up here. It's kind of a cool little screen where we're, oh, you disappeared out of your O. It's like Hollywood O's. (laughs) But let's uh, get the left screen. (laughs) Yeah, I noticed that. It was weird. (laughs) But uh, let's see here. Now, this would be on Rumble. We are playing on Rumble right now. However, I'm recording all of this uh, live as we go. So these will eventually go up on YouTube. And uh, if I've been ignoring my Patreon, well, it's just because uh, I don't uh, have a very big presence right now with Patreon. But uh, you guys could change all of that. I am working on making these uh, productions uh, better quality as we go. And, uh, like, proof of that will be... Proof of that will be when I line up your square to actually line up with the O a little better. I tried to get your skinny little head in there, but uh, I kind of... I know, I have to like, move it around a little bit. That's me. I have to move the square around. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> right. I'll work on that while this guy says his piece. It gives me about two and a half minutes. Now, hopefully this doesn't blast out anybody's ears, so headphone warning. So yesterday, the woman beating racist sexual predator who has spent a lifetime demeaning and belittling anyone his power, wealth, and privilege allowed him to, declared martial law in Canada. The black-faced racist who spends his holidays pissing on the graves of indigenous children that his father helped to bury, invoked the Emergency Measures Act to crush the dangerous uprising of the peasant class in their fortified bouncy castles. Justin Trudeau, the tyrant king of Canada, backed by the rich ruling liberal elite who've elevated him to the level of king by way of his name and bloodline. This tyrant king has for the last two years of his reign of terror imprisoned his subjects, laid waste to their lands and burned their villages. All his life he has wronged people and they have capitulated out of fear and now for the first time there's people who won't submit to your highness's tyranny, his bullying. So they're labeled as dangerous insurrectionists because suddenly these people from whom you've taken so much are standing up and saying no more. And now it's a threat to your pocketbook and the pocketbooks of your billionaire buddies. So the peasants that stand up to your passport system of class and privilege and your anti-science, anti-freedom tyranny are labeled as enemies of the crown. Traitors that threaten your kingdom not because they're violent or racist or misogynistic or anti-science but because they just won't goddamn submit so you deputize the protectors of the people as your king's guard to round up the disloyal imprison them smash their equipment threaten to seize the assets of anyone who may dare even support them 
people who have done more for their fellow countrymen in three weeks than you have in your entire pathetic life. You destroyed their businesses, slaughtered their friends and families, and now you're going after what's left by declaring them terrorists because for the first time in your fucking life, someone had the audacity to say no to you. An irredeemable tyrant with an unquenchable thirst for power, a petulant child with a crown and an army at his disposal. The King Joffrey of Canada, and without question the most dangerous threat to our democracy. I only take solace in the fact that when your reign does come to an end, the history books will ensure that when people speak your name, it will be stated with the same disdain and disgust as the names Stalin, Pol Pot, and Adolf Hitler. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. I'm back. <laughs> Sorry, my uh, microphone disappeared for a second there. But yeah, isn't that crazy, eh? Yes. I see. I, I, I think we have ourselves a concerned citizen, uh, somebody who actually cares about his countrymen. You know, um, how bizarre and unique is that? Yeah, and he and he spoke it uh, very eloquently. The way that he like explained things and ex and extremely straight to the point as well. Like he wasn't he wasn't uh, you know dancing around the uh, the, the the points or uh, beating around the bush, as they say. But uh, right, wow. Well, you know, Jesus, I, I I've been trying to process things while I was doing that. You know, I was saying things a week ago, like, you know, what is your play? You know, what is your play, Trudeau? And then it just became very obvious suddenly when he uh, enacted this, you know, you know, Emergency Measures Act. <laughs> and That's like, what we were talking about a while ago. I mean, that obviously this is what we we're going to use. They're going to use those those camps for. Well, that's what it was. I mean, you know, his career was going nowhere fast. And like by pulling that little maneuver, uh he was able to keep his uh, his side of the aisle kind of straightened out with a whip vote for the uh, Measures Act. So if anybody voted, if anyone voted it down, what's that? That this is what it means basically is if anyone actually voted them against, you know, then you'd lose your seat. <laughs> so right. So I mean, it was kind of like a no brainer. The NDP stuck, you know, stuck around. Oh, you know, on second thought. <laughs> but anyway, that being said. While I was considering all of this other crap, two things went by. One thing I'm very embarrassed about, and I'll talk about that in a minute. But the other thing is that he went and rescinded the uh, the act because I think he knows it's going to go to a Senate vote and be a complete loser. So I don't know if he's doing this to save face and find compromise or if he's got another plan, which I'm, I've heard a rumor of, but we'll see if it, you know, if it gets... Uh, to, if it gets to see the light of day anyway, this rumor, and it's that uh, he might step, he might step down and leave his uh, uh, deputy chief of security there uh, in line or somebody else in in the WEF. So we'll see. I don't know. This is this this is getting to be a, a crazy little kind of cat and mouse political game. Very very much so. So they always do that. They turn it into one. You know. Yeah. Well, on the. On the good side of things, there's a couple of uh, lawsuits coming towards uh, the federal government and Trudeau. So we'll see how those things pan out. Brian Peckford, yeah, it's one of our one of our old premiers who actually uh, wrote some of the some of the bits and pieces that went into the Charter and Bill of Rights for Canadians in 1981, which went into the 1982 Constitution Act. So when they finally figured it all out. Kind of slapped it together, but man, what a what a friggin' nightmare for anyone who actually gives a shit about their country in a in a sense yeah. of uh, our futures and our, our future rights. And you know, I was I was really really hopeful for the vote the other night, and I couldn't believe it when it was uh, you know when it was a, a win for keeping the emergency act open, and yet it was a day late too because uh, 
Trudeau froze Parliament on Friday on the day they were going to go do it, I think, earlier, which bought them an extra couple of days. So... But I so think, it's full on Marcelo? Well, pretty much. But I mean, he rescinded the order. But how much of the uh, um, how much of the infrastructure had changed in those few days that now they have what they needed? You know what I mean? They they managed to uh, you know freeze all the assets that they could at the time, and now it all, it all has to be undone. You know, according to the fact that now those laws are no longer applicable for the extreme measures. So I don't know, man. It's 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 a. It's Is it true that they went after their animals? Um, there's been, I haven't, I, it's, it's part of the, it's one of the uh, issues that I really want to go and look into, but I've not looked into it so far. And yeah, I've heard stories that they were authorizing the euthanasia of, of, euthanasia, yeah. of animals and stuff like that. So that would make me incredibly sad if it were the case. I don't know how I'd react if I found out that were actually true, but, uh, you know, that's right up there with family members, like, you know, like elderly and children, you know, that's, uh, right. you know, so animals are part of the family. Exactly. You don't, uh, you don't treat them like livestock, you know, exactly. You don't treat it. You don't, you don't even treat livestock like that. Sorry. I, sh I shouldn't even, <laughs> <laughs> I, I should literally, if I, you know, kind of be specific here. Yeah. No, I mean, it's just ridiculous. And now, you know, there's a there's the another story. there's another thing I want to talk about that's too. What I mean, people that way. Right, I do want to talk about something that's been in the background too. And they there was a few stories that went out. Hey, uh, whatever you're doing in the background, that's loud. <laughs> I'm sorry, I was just opening a fridge. <laughs> I see, I see. All right, but uh, yeah, like I was saying, there's a little bit of a a seed of a story that might turn into something down the road. So keep your ears uh, to the ground on this. But uh, there's a possibility that uh, wild animals that are hunted, uh, some of them may be COVID carriers. I know it's ridiculous, but if they... Oh, of course. Of if, course. That if, makes sense. If they do this, then there's a chance that we can have more, I don't know, variants and, you know, different carrier vectors. Oh, God. We'll see how creative they get over, like... Uh, they're going to be uh, pressured to use some real science, though. So I don't know. Uh, they're going to really have to uh, uh, depend on their sales techniques or transparency, whatever they choose to use from this point forward. But uh, right. there's going to be some uh, some issues as the other shoes look like. It looks like the other shoe is about to drop is what I'm trying to say. But uh, it might look like... Uh, a bit of a win for freedom and everything, but we also have to remember that uh, a lot of damage has been already done in different areas. So uh, while we mitigate that and everything seems to go back to normal, we still have to remain uh, watchful and, uh, you know, be curious. Of, Wait for the next thing. That's right. Because, you know, like, it, they don't just stop their plans. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> It just keeps going. It's like if they, if they have like one that like comes into fruition, that's just all the better. Yeah, I mean it's been it's been just bonkers. Like uh, I, I I have like a, a you know a mild dyslexia, right? That kind of I'm 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 even more speechless now without it. Like it's just fuck. Oh, sorry. Yeah, no worries. Table. Yeah, sounded yeah. like it. <laughs> Jeff C coming off. <laughs> right. the table. No doubt. That's uh, good. That's good. Did it on purpose. So yeah, but, yeah, yeah. No, I uh, I was like just kind of thinking, sitting back, and it was I didn't get to do the uh, daily nudarino at noon, but thank God it's 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 always noon somewhere, you know, and that's why we have that as our tagline. It's definitely noon somewhere in the world, even if it's in the middle of the ocean right now. Who gives a shit? There's, exactly. There's some there's some sand shark just sitting there. Just uh, land sharking away and just like, hey, I'm chilling. Someone's thinking about me. There you go, yep. land shark. But uh, sand shark, the land shark. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, it's been uh, it's been an interesting, stressful time. It's oh, hard. It's hard. hard. I've been watching a lot of the uh, the proceedings and uh, what's his name, uh, Donald. Uh, 
what the heck is his name? Tepe? I, on Jet, I gotta think of his bloody name now. It's somewhere in here. Let me just get out of the browser where we got him. It'll be in my history, I'm pretty sure. Do, 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 do. And Donald Neil. Oh, Donald Plett. That's his name. Donald Neil Plett. I'll, uh, yeah, maybe you know what I'll do. Yeah, maybe. Oh, hey. Oh. I heard myself there echo. <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, your headphones give up the goat again with their Bluetooth? Apparently, they're making you dance funny, too. Well, we'll just wait for him to un uh, unbugger his sound. But anyway, yeah, <laughs> it's uh, I had to get this uh, daily Nunarino out at least before midnight or by midnight. But uh, I wouldn't try to sell you to one show over the course of two days. That would be cheap. It wouldn't be such a daily show now, would it? However, uh, we're only capable of so much sometimes. I actually got some sleep and it was just so good. I totally just decided to miss <laughs> noon altogether and just kind of get right past it uh we have him yeah Dimacho database is uh trying to get his sound back looks like i think his bluetooth is unpaired okay well my headphones like isn't clicking on for some reason oh. i'm trying to get it back on it looks like but it's clicked on now just keep talking yeah it looks like it's clicked back on for the microphone aspect Okay, so that's good. Yeah, I just can't hear it on my headphones for some reason. I'm oh. trying to get it. Attach themselves to the movement for a variety of reasons. And yes, it is obvious that okay, some no, very on. bad elements join this process. That was enough for the Prime Minister and his caucus members to decree Why that the truckers and the millions of Canadians cheering them on were terrible the Prime Minister's characterization of them as racist, misogynist, insurrectionist, and a fringe minority was shameful. He portrayed them as dangerous, potentially violent, and possibly terrorists. They all had intolerable views. How can we tolerate these people, he asked. This is incredible. The Prime Minister of Canada goes on television and ask the questions about millions of his fellow citizens. How can we tolerate these people? Yet, there were, yes, there were idiots with racist views in this group, and no one in this chamber should tolerate the display of racist signs. But if you paint everyone with the same brush, all those who attended this protest, all those who supported the convoy on its way to Ottawa, all those who admired their courage to demand and enter the mandates. When you miss, then you miss the point. Can someone, can anyone in this chamber really think that Jagmeet Singh's brother, his own brother, would contribute $17,000 to a far-right racist movement? I don't think so. Yes there were bizarre theories offered by some participants in the protest. But if you think that all the people here in Ottawa or across Canada who are fed up with the Trudeau government's heavy-handed approach are wearing tinfoil hats, then you yourself have become a believer in conspiracy theories. Yes, there were incidents between the protesters and residents of Ottawa. But if you describe that as a violent protest, then you have forgotten Dozens of events in the last 25 years or so, including a few riots after such politically charged events like the Stanley Cup playoffs. Yes, there was talk about evicting the Prime Minister, but there was no credible plot of an insurrection. People who want to take over the government do not come here in their own truck with the name of their company on the door and announce their arrival on every social media platform, and then spend three weeks in front of Parliament in a hot tub or roasting a pig. They would not turn the street corner below the Prime Minister's office window into what journalists called Ottawa's hottest nightclub and dance the night away. 
For millions of Canadians, the trucker convoy was their hope for a way out. They were tired of being pushed aside, and they wanted their message heard. Colleagues, you and I go back to our communities every week, and we hear people who are fed up with the government saying, what can we do? They feel powerless, and when you begin to strip their fundamental rights away from them, their feeling of powerlessness turns to desperation. Eventually, people get tired of being controlled and will look for a way out. This is how their Prime Minister responded to them on January 31st. The concerns expressed by a few people gathered in Ottawa right now are not new, not surprising, are heard, but are a continuation what we've unfortunately seen in disinformation and misinformation online. Conspiracy theorists about microchips, about God knows what else that go with the tinfoil hats. They had to come, they had come to voice their concerns, but the Prime Minister just insulted them, sounding more like a bully than a true statesman. That is part of the problem we are facing. We have not done a good job of listening to the voices of those who have a different view than us on vaccinations and on heavy-handed public measures. The primary debate is not about whether these measures are right or wrong. It is about whether someone can have a different view for whatever reason and not be censored. It is about whether someone can have different values or different beliefs and be allowed to live in accordance with those. People have viewpoints and opinions and beliefs that don't, sometimes don't line up with the accepted CBC version of reality. But if they voice them, they are shunned and criticized. Colleagues, we need to do better. We need to do better at listening. We need to do better at allowing people to live according to their beliefs. This is the price of a civilized society in today's 21st century world. Trying to force conformity is only tearing our social fabric in ways that could take generations to repair. This is partly why it is so devastating that the Prime Minister would not even talk to the people from the convoy. His imper impertinence just solidified in their minds that he doesn't care about them. He only cares about their obedience to his edicts. It is his, this impertinence which resulted in the convoy to Ottawa spawning local convoy protests in cities across the country and eventually blockades in Coots, Alberta, Emerson, Manitoba, Surrey, BC, and the Ambassador Bridge in Ontario. Had the Prime Minister de-escalated the situation by opening up a dialogue, we would be in a very different situation today. Some people say that the Prime Minister could not meet the leaders of the convoy, that these people were dangerous and had crazy ideas. Fair enough. But Justin Trudeau could have asked a third party mediator to listen to the protesters' concerns. Just like Robert Barassa did in 1990 by appointing Justice Ellen B. Gold, the father of our government leader, to mediate the Oka crisis, he could have done what premiers like Francis Legault, Doug Ford, Scott Moe, or Jason Kenney have done. Tell Canadians that he heard them. Tell us that he had a plan to end the mandates and other restrictions. Tell us that there is hope. Instead, the Prime Minister's approach has been to try and smear the protesters and paint them all with the same brush. On January 31st, with respect to the Ottawa protests, the Prime Minister said, we are not intimidated by those who hurl insults 
and abuse at small business workers and steal food from the homeless. We won't give in to those who fly racist flags. We won't cave to those who engage in vandalism or dishonor the memory of our veterans. As I have already noted, this is not a fair characterization of the people who have been protesting outside this chamber. You bring it here. Thank you. All right, I think I'm going to stop that right about there, only because uh, we've pretty much uh, gone through about seven and a half, eight minutes. And yeah, right. it's about an hour and I think hour and 15 hour and 60 oh it's right there hour 15 minutes roughly so you can imagine he goes into some really great detail it's probably one of the best speeches uh i've heard uh and i don't hear a lot of speeches but it's up there with some of the uh like it's movie quality <laughs> let's just say but it's also a sign that at least somebody is uh is observed at least all of the points that most of us have made that have been also made to look like non points, like by you know the liberal uh, media and and its uh, proponents, right? So it's uh, like I said, it's been a very trying uh, time for for anyone who gives a shit. It's kind of been stressful because. You know, if they're allowed to win in these cases and more members are infiltrated by the WEF, like who's to say where we're headed? And like I said, how much damage has to be undone now? Not just the stuff that we can see, but what has been accessed and, and changed in, in the other senses that we are not looking at that's not so obvious. So I don't know. What do you think? Any ideas? Yeah, uh, and I, I feel like um, after, like during the whole um, process of the COVID uh, waves and everything, it seemed like the uh, secret societies were coming out in the open. But now that it's kind of like slowed down and people don't care about it as much anymore, uh, it seems like it's uh, uh, the secret societies have, have gone back underground. Yeah, um, we were talking, and I mean, like in in the social world, I mean in in the entertainment world, um, in symbolism, things like that. I know. Yeah, I was going to say actually, because it's kind of why I brought you on, because now we can kind of talk about some of these other aspects a little bit. Um, like we we were even talking off the can like off off the air. We were talking a bit about uh, how this looks like. You know how once every couple of hundred years the Rosicrucians kind of come out of their little little holes and just start doing things, whatever it is, you know, whatever mischief, yeah. whatever mischief they're up to, and whatever uh, the little pieces of the puzzle they start putting together. Yeah, it's kind of bizarre, and then suddenly, like imps in the night, they just disappear. You know, it's like the sock gnomes. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's exactly. In it's kind of interesting it's but it's, it's it's beyond a point of what is interesting now to a point of almost uh i'm concerned because like we're past the uh, point of trying to figure out their you know modus operandi like it's this is more like uh uh we've almost got to stop significant damage and we're already in a state of recovering from damages you know as we go i'm talking about like more uh, less obvious things, things like damages in our social system, our education, um, general emotional and social well-being of the citizens. I mean, they're pretty, I mean, two years, man, like they've been, everything's been upside down. Families have been destroyed. Like home businesses have been completely, absolutely demolished. Uh, the only businesses taking over are the big box stores and you know your amazons and and the like i mean drop shipping has probably increased a, a hell of a lot like with affiliate accounts have increased like tenfold like it's just like and i'm not i'm not pulling out any accurate numbers these are just things that are just basically kind of changing by windfall of the conditions that have been kind of created by this whole uh two years of really um absolute like draconian rule like 
across Europe, across the states, across Canada, um, in the land down under, you know, it's crazy. So I'm not really telling anybody anything they don't already know, but, you know, at the same time, it's like, when you stand back and look at this thing, like that, that's taken place before us, like it's pretty damn diabolical. Like this is like, this is like, mm hmm, like level of shit, you know? It's like kind of crazy. But yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Five billion it's like, dollars. <laughs> it definitely has like that megalomaniac kind of effect. Well, and it, it it almost got to the mustache twirling. Like, we've caught Trudeau, like, coming out and just saying, yeah, by the way, there's a loophole that allows the operating government to stomp all over your human fucking rights. Ha <laughs> ha, we're going to do it no matter what. So suck it up, buttercup, you know. We're going... Uh, we're going straight to we're going straight to home we're going to go to the home plate in the first inning you know what i mean like he's he's that's it that's it we're done <laughs> it's crazy man how long before they start doing that shit over here well i mean it's not i mean it's just a matter of time i think the infiltration's already started there at, anyway i think it's already happening it's it's all the pieces have to get put into place it's look they're in it's Australia. Like the body snatchers euphemism. Kind of, in a, in a weird way, it is kind of like the pod people. I mean, look at this, mm -hmm. the, the the very dramatic and animated fanatic left are just like the pod people, like <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> that's uh, what's that friggin'. Uh, that's the 1970 version. The 19, was it 78, 73? I can't remember now. Donald Sutherland. Yeah. That's a great version. Yeah. That's a fantastic. Mm -hmm. I want to see yeah. that again because that's, but that's true terror. Like honestly, like if you think about it, like, like there's people I just can't talk to anymore because you just can't, you can't get it through to them, and then they just respond in such anger and vitriol because you just disagree with them and you're giving them a different avenue to, to, to explore in, in terms of thought and reasoning and logic and hey consider this oh you're a conspiracy theorist that no, you can't you're, do that like I, I had someone tell me I'm one of those you're just one of those I'm like <laughs> you're just one of those <laughs> one of those what those people I go what do you mean those people they're like those people that don't like anything i'm like i like lots of things what do you mean <laughs> like she's like, <laughs> she just can't and they just can't come up with an argument they just they like i just been told not to talk to you because you you're, you're different I, you know and you can't argue with that it's like oh my god there's, yeah, yeah there's no vaccine for stupid i mean no, I'm just, yeah. And it's not even fair to say that because there's definitely a level of uh, cognitive dissonance there that it just washes over them with their group think dynamic or what's been dubbed as the mass formation psychosis. I almost don't want to say mass formation psychosis because just the word creates mass formation psychosis. <laughs> well, they've created this whole like illusion that there's something called brain fog that's caused by the COVID experience, which is causing people to think they are dumber because they had COVID. Everything needs to be kind of exemplified by a thing or a definition or a label, something that people can point at and go, our thing is bad. He's talking bad stuff, you know, and just, he's bad, mm -hmm. bad, 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 bad. But anyway, it's just kind of, <laughs> it's just kind of ridiculous where we're at right now. Like, I don't know if I've got anybody even watching the show right now, but uh, I, I haven't actually uh, opened up the live streaming bit. Where are we here? Let's go to the page, and I'll respond to chats. If there's anybody in there even. Hey, there's one watching now. It's probably me watching my own show. Yay, to my one listener. Hey, see that? I'll do that for you. If you come and watch, I'll wave to you too. Now I'm waving to you from the from from your past, but wait, from your past to the future, or present, to now. Yes. <laughs> we should do a, a future podcast that where we like talk to ourselves in the future. Yeah, that'd be interesting. And See. then we look at it later and like 
re- like we could review it. <laughs> we could review ourselves review. <laughs> talking to us, looking at ourselves. It's too bad we yeah. You know what we do is we release it in a in a different order. Like we release the uh, well, we reviewed ourselves from the future. <laughs> I don't, know. Right. I don't know how we would do that. It's kind of funny though. But if we just really, yeah, it's, funny. it's a funny concept. Yeah, we just told everybody. Someone's gonna run with that one and fucking kill it. We're just gonna be like, I ah, well, see. It's what I I actually did that as like a vlog to myself. <laughs> like I never showed anybody. I, I just like basically kept talking to myself as if I was gonna look at it and how I was you know responding to myself. Right. If you will. Right. Like, uh, it's weird. It, it it it's almost like talking to yourself in the mirror but then you're like picturing that you're communicating with whoever it is that is going to be you looking back at that what you're doing right right now right right and you kind of get you know into this weird like um like bridge I have no idea what you're on about. And I'm just joking. <laughs> just like, a bridge from from the time that you are going to look at it yeah. from the time to the time that you made it. Yeah, I, I, was, I was just looking at you like, I got nothing, man. And then how are you going to respond to yourself telling yourself stuff from I, the past? You know, you know, that kind of thing. We, Almost like a, a, those things that you put in something and you put it and you dig in the ground. A time capsule, like a time capsule. Right. Yeah, I see what you mean. We, we, uh, Tara and I, we played that, uh, Yuri, uh, what's his nuts there, the Russian KGB operative that defected back, like, and he did that speech like 30 years ago on video talking about how it only takes, like, basically a one full generation to destabilize and demoralize a nation into, you know, submitting to other social changes that you set forth, kind of like, you know, as you go. You know, and and this was actually referring to the the whole Cold War initiative that the KGB kind of had to kind of destabilize and demoralize American troops and American uh, people, right? Socially, anyway. Hmm. It's funny how that whole thing has been kind of done again because he wasn't referring to what's happening now. He was referring to what they were doing back then, and kind of that's why he defected and gave these secrets to the u.s so they could try to deflect these uh efforts that were being uh you know done you know some of the damage was you know was basically kind of absorbed and shifted away some of it was still you know taken on the on the chin whatever but they did it again okay. and it, you know to all of us like and they hoodwinked the whole planet this <laughs> time like they yeah. you know what i mean like it's more or less affected an entire majority of the globe in a similar fashion rather than having tinier effects, you know, in localized areas like we've been seeing up to this point, you know, but, uh, I think we got to keep our eye on some places, uh, um, outside of the current popular sphere. I think these things have been happening while other things are, you know, building up and you know like this whole ukraine thing for instance right i think we're looking in the wrong spot i have a i have a suspicion that we're going to see something huge happen around the black sea crimea it could it could be uh even as extreme as maybe a nuclear detonation or something i don't know but there's going to be some major loss of life and uh probably a loss of property and uh and you know, there's going to be, I think, I think there's going to be an attack on Crimea or that area. I don't know. Something, something's t- telling me that while everything over here is getting everyone's attention. It's like what happened before with the plane blowing up. Yeah. Well, the, I mean, the trucker thing is the trucker convoy is like, has descended upon Washington now, hasn't it? And I haven't actually covered anything there yet. So I have to kind of switch, um, switch over and start looking at that. But that's another thing though, is that like, there's a whole lot more media to not pay attention to this in the states just like how canadian media didn't pay attention to our trucker convoy we'll see how that happens there because you might have another january 6th you know insurrection again so you know right i don't know it's kind of i think the whole thing looks like dog shit the fact that the fact that trudeau waited three uh, three weeks and and Instead of instead of coming out and just reasonably talking, or at least making it look like he was talking to somebody, you know, you know, 
you know how they you know somebody would say you know like i don't care lie to me for crying out loud you know what i mean like at least go through the effort of trying you know you know provide it provide an opening at least for this conversation to take place and you know you can tell me to go fuck myself if you don't like it but i mean at least you know at least allow me the the case you know to to be considered but no no he just doubled down he just doubles down and starts cracking heads yeah and all that hope that got built up over three weeks crushes it like a fucking just like a grape just there you go that's what i think of your fucking hope truckers there you go you misogynist, friggin' racist. Like, that's, you know, but, yeah. So I think we should be looking uh, more or less at uh, what stands to lose. Because I have a funny feeling that the uh, NATO forces are going to push back. Something's going to happen, and it's going to get blamed somewhere else. There's going to be fingers pointed as to what happened. You remember the whole bit that happened? Yeah, you, you you mentioned this just a few minutes back there about the uh, uh, the the plane that went down in Ukraine. Now, of course, yeah, yeah. I mean talking about that and considering that another plane of the exact same model, slightly different designation, but same numbers, if I'm not mistaken, uh, mm-hmm. went, went missing. Um, mm-hmm. And on and, and on it, yeah. And what happened, like? between nobody knows but missing from that first plane are uh are actual oh, my, my my phone's about to die so if i disappear that's why i'll try to come back okay. in a second i gotta um plug it in okay okay so, so if, keep you, talking. if you disappear you won't cease to exist okay that's good though yes exactly it's <laughs> funny but uh yeah i mean it's kind of uh it's just kind of ironic how they just keep you kind of watching over here while these other little tricks are happening over here and over there they they often will move legislation uh you know i don't know if uh, i think the american senate's been just as bad as the uh, canadian one lately i mean the canadian senate hasn't really right. parliament hasn't voted on anything i think in like two years almost because uh it's been uh blocked out if i'm not mistaken due to uh the uh the virus of unknown origin. I should probably put the echo. Yes. On. I should put the echo on for that. It'd be hilarious. I know, right? <laughs> Let's see. Uh, I know I got that from. That's from the critical drinker. He's a movie reviewer. He's pretty awesome. That's funny. But. Uh, what the fuck, man? All right, there we go. I almost got this. Ah, there we go. Uh, the, Yay, power! Right. right on. Okay. Power has been dictated. Vindicated. Vindicated. So, so what's new and wonderful in uh, in America land? I'm not even sure. I'm like, I haven't been paying attention. I've just been in my own little bubble. Yeah. Uh, uh, I heard. But, so, uh, I caught wind. Somebody said, uh, "Well, you know, America should just annex Canada." It's like, you know what? Just fucking do it. Just do it already. <laughs> I don't even know what that means. Oh, it just it just means it just means immediately attach Canada as to like a fifty first state, basically, or you know, or the or oh yeah yeah or sure, all, why not or make our provinces states, I guess. A lot I, of people think it, that think that there's fifty one states. Yeah, wait till you get awesome. wait wait to get a load of Quebec. Don't worry, wait till you get a load of Quebec. They they could they could be fun to deal with. They've always wanted to be their own country, and there's been separatists and a whole bit. Like we haven't had our deal. You know, we've had some issues with them in the past ultimately though i think they they they're a defining part of canadian culture of their you know if we could just find a way to get along <laughs> <laughs> isn't that the way yeah i mean we could sit you there and, and we, we could cuss together and make fun of you know justin bieber together like uh you know like a proper people you know just with some differences mm-hmm. but uh yeah it's just I think it'll be a, I think it'll be a, a fun neighborly, uh, com, you know, not competition. What do you call that? Uh, friendly, I don't know. Ah, the thesaurus in my head's broken. I can't think anyway. <laughs> smoke, <laughs> sm- brain smoke. Brain fog. You have brain fog. I have that 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 that, that shit that doesn't exist. Brain fog. Brain fog. Mm-hmm. No, I smoked a fatty earlier, like, and I was like, wow, you know, if I 
don't do the podcast soon. I'll probably end up falling asleep and then I won't be doing it at all. So like I said, I want to get I it. Saw a cop, I got to tell you a story. I saw a cop recently, mm. like try to turn down the wrong way and the one and the one way, a one way road. It was funny because he, he like, you know, was doing the signal and everything and then went over and then finally started turning and then, had to cut in front of the other person that was doing the right thing mm. <laughs> in order to go to the next street. Wow. And I was just like, wow. Yeah. If, if, he's, if, if he's from that neighborhood and he did that, that's kind of, uh, yeah, that's funny. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Probably too busy playing on his computer, you know. <laughs> it was quite funny because it was one of those, like, streets where, like, there's not that much traffic. It just there's like when there is they have to stop there yeah. and it's a one way. I remember I got turning left on, on a one way. I like, yeah oh, I saw I saw things. a police officer was doing that in his car but he was on his computer thing there and the, the, he had the uh, the left turn like the left turn the advanced light on and I was like buddy everyone's behind him honking at him and I'm like get off your fucking computer I like I'm, I'm looking at him through my driver's side window I'm like you know got the, I'm shrugging at him I'm like hey uh, what's wrong what are you doing get off your fucking computer I'm stripping my hands out like this what are you doing <laughs> you know that, you know that, you know that meme with Picard hey <laughs> what are you doing. Kind of like Seinfeld, yeah, it's kind of funny. But anyway, yeah, eventually he went. You can throw that in in post. <laughs> he ended up pulling me over later that night, and I was like, "Saying bye." Oh, no, it was, it's just no big deal. Oh, okay. I, I yeah. had a, I had a headlight out because I had I had I was in a bit of a little fender bender earlier that month because of a blizzard, and uh, and somebody that wasn't from the area was in front of me and just stopped dead in front of me, and I just kind of it like. One mile an hour, just slowly slid, and just kind of broke my headlight. <laughs> but uh, completely rode off the back end of that fucking minivan, though. Holy crap, those things aren't built very well. I hit it with this, you know, with the Ford Explorer. <laughs> my Ford Explorer was like not even touched. You could drive that thing through a house, though. But I mean, anyway, uh, yeah, it was kind of funny, but not really cop came over he goes you know i'm pulling you over i said yeah i got an accident report for that look at the numbers in the side in the window he goes oh i guess you do i'm like all right have a good night <laughs> like, you're doing a wonderful job officer What's, you're doing a great yeah. job you're doing a great job <laughs> and we saw it too i was out i was out for it was from out of province so he'd actually have to make a request for the information probably take him a couple hours to do that freaking work He's like, ah, I yeah, exactly. I don't want to do that. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> oh well. But uh, what can I say? So um, later tonight, I might, I might be doing a tech stream. Uh, just so you guys are aware, I might be. I, I gotta figure out how I can take Pipewire, which is the name of the uh, audio system I'm using, and I've got to make it hard wire the connections to have a persistent kind of a setup because when it goes dynamic it just wants to disconnect things and reconnect them to other inputs and other outputs and that's not the way i want to go it's uh okay oh yeah so you got to debug it basically well i've Don't got I've, I've got to hard code it basically like yeah. most people just have one audio device one output device or headphones you know what i mean so it's usually pretty easy just to go with that and the defaults mm -hmm. all work but I've got four different devices. I've got, you know, the audio headset, which is USB, a USB mixer, the two-channel mixer I have, which is also USB. Uh, I've got the onboard video, audio rather, which is, you know, the sound card on the on the uh, MSI motherboard, and then uh, something else. I don't know some shit. Oh yeah, the <laughs> the uh, RTX board that has the HDMI outputs. Those are also treated as uh, uh, sync and source for uh input output so i'm already getting technical and losing myself yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh we've been uh live now for 54 minutes uh 50 seconds the uh first eight minutes or so is uh gonna be uh i'm gonna try and make sure i have something okay. interesting to watch while i'm uh getting myself unfucked and get you know getting the show ready so i'll try and think of uh, some fun material to put up in these uh countdowns while i'm getting ready at least uh, there's something there right i'm kind of be, yeah so i'm gonna look at doing that i gotta 
dig out some of my old videos. I was going to get into uh, a video uh, that I did back in the day, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait for uh, later this week. I think we're going to do a Truth Hurts broadcast, and we're going to talk about the issues that led up to the Crimean crisis and kind of get kind of like a top-down view of where things went and how they've kind of permeated over the years since 2014 to now and where are we right now with what's happening with Ukraine. Um, I don't think it's everything that we're being told, but I... I mean, how I, much of this is a cyber versus like a... A lot. Or, or, or like a psychological... It's a lot of everything. And it's, yeah, it's a lot of, it, it's funny because it is a cyber war as well. There's a lot of cyber attacks. They're trying to take down um, a lot of stuff. And I just haven't looked into it. And I'm going to be looking into it in the next, you know, few days. Couple, this next kind of, I don't know, what is it, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday? Yeah, so probably by Saturday we'll have a, we'll have a pretty, uh, pretty, pretty rocking show there. I'm going to be talking about how we... We're basically very instrumental in setting up these uh, uh, Nazi sympathizer groups as proxy government, either the attaches or the government themselves. When we put the proxies in place in uh, Ukraine back 2014, 2015, it's interesting how we also didn't vote down other uh, Nazi related interests when other countries were trying to, uh, you know, get bills agreed upon and votes and we're not voting their damnation of the uh xenophobic nazis but uh yeah it's 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 a lot to unpack we'll get into that kind of crap on uh on saturday we got enough crap to go over in our heads right now and see where we stand and kind of you know see if anything's being uh misused abused and uh that's that that's, that's all i got How all righty what do you got i got anything to to say before we uh pack her in or what not really. I'm I'm like uh, outside looking in. Yeah, that's why I keep you around. <laughs> so I have like a weird viewpoint, I guess. You know? No, but, it's uh, cool. It's cool. It's cool because uh, you know you like to jump in and uh, talk about certain aspects when they when they have like a significance in uh, either the symbolism or in the numerology. And you know, like I often say to people, like. It doesn't matter whether you believe in that stuff or not. These sons of bitches do. So sometimes there is uh, significance. And uh, it's just interesting to uh, to explore those aspects because sometimes they are relevant. But uh, on that note... Oh, I, you know what? One, one thing. Uh, I watched this movie called Free Guy. And I think that that is technically the new um, Matrix. Not not this not an equivalence of what matrix was, but like in the sense of like, you know, you're living in a alternate reality. I mean, a reality based yeah. game situation, or yeah. simulation or whatever like that. I got you know, that. I got, uh, yeah, I got you. Yeah. something going on there. And, and, uh, 56 was like brought up several times and that's the coronavirus number because mm -hmm. it equals that. Right. And yeah. so does like the, the Jesuit order. So, you know, in, intertwine. Wow. Huh. Interesting. Well, yeah, I watched Free Guy and I totally got the whole that meta, that metaverse kind of uh, feel like it was weird. I was like, ah, oh, yeah, it kind of, I don't know. It was kind of goofy. It was more goofy like than it was uh, Grand Theft Auto. Like they had a couple of shots there, but. Uh, There's definitely a lot of like tropey Grand Theft Auto themes that I, I felt like were involved like it, and they were just taking it to another different direction yeah yeah. yeah yeah i mean it, I, but still it, it seemed like they were you know they they had like uh a game engine element of and then they were like okay but well, let's do this with it instead of that you yeah know? They did everything but pay Grand Theft Auto for the, the licensing for likenesses and what have you. <laughs> like so, exactly. So, I mean, they did everything short of that. But, yeah, I hear what you're saying. But, uh, well, that's always uh, some of the low-hanging fruit we could talk about the next time. We're going to be doing some movie reviews together here, myself and Jamatra Database. We'll have that up on one of the other channels, uh, on our Rob, Rob Reviews channel there. But we'll, uh, till then, I guess we'll... Uh, I have to say, Sayonara. I will be watching uh, 
Snowpiercer, the series. I got to get caught up through season one, so I'm where you are at. So, but uh, yeah, definitely. Look forward forward to that, and we'll be we'll be reviewing some reviews. <laughs> so, <laughs> yes. Or, or, review the review. or react to some reactions. But uh, until then, we'll uh, catch you next time, guys. Peace out. And uh, this has been the Daily New Arena with Rob Jumatri Database. And uh, we'll catch you next time, guys. Peace out. Peace.